the Spirit of God telling you this. You got to be a chain. There's got to be a chain. Something down inside of you. Yes. Dealing with your conscience. Dealing with your mind. Dealing with your heart. Telling you, you can't continue on doing and acting. You know there's got to be a chain. Not because your mama taught you. Not because your daddy. Not because the preacher. But because God's spirit is drawing you. God's spirit is dealing with you. God's spirit is telling you. God's word is revealing himself to you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw light to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. It's up to us now. It's up to man. Now. Ain't gonna be no excuse. Folks in hell. Folks going to hell. Ain't gonna be no excuse. Is it? And preachers that don't preach the truth. They're going to have to answer to God because they didn't tell the truth. Amen. But let's read here. In uh, the book of John chapter 14 and verse 18. John chapter 14 and verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. Yet a little while. A little while. And the world seeing me no more. And the world don't see me. But you see me. But you see me. Because I live. Because I live. You shall live also. You shall live also. At that day, uh -huh. you shall know that I am in my Father. Yes. And ye in me. And I in you. Uh huh. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him uh -huh. and will manifest myself. Uh, I will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, Now, verse 18, read that one again. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will the Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost is a helper. Right. He's your advocate. He stands in there and like a lawyer represents you. Huh? That's right. I will not leave you comfortless. Yes. But like I said, he give us his son. He give us the son, give us his spirit. He shed his blood for us. He give us his word. He causes his blood to be shed so we can come through the blood into the very presence of God. All of this was prepared so we could draw nigh to him without guilt, without condemnation. Hallelujah. Well, just read it. Let's just read a little bit of that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 16 and verse 19. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. Uh -huh. Said the Lord. Yes. I will put my laws into their hearts. I'll put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds. And in their mind. Will I write them. I will write them. And their sins and iniquities. Yes. Will I remember no more. Hallelujah. Now, where remission of these now, is, verse 19, having therefore, brethren, having therefore, brethren, boldness, boldness to enter into the holiest, to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. Hallelujah! Through the blood we enter into His presence. Verse 22, read that. One. Let us draw near. Let us draw near with a true heart. With a true heart. In full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled. Having our hearts sprinkled. From an evil conscience. From an evil conscience. And our bodies. And our bodies. Washed with pure water. Washed by the washing of the water of the word. God said, I've made provisions for you to come to me. Yes, sir. I've made provisions for you to draw closer to me. You can do everything, but until people... When the only of the people begin to open up their hearts, 
But there's another scripture that says no man can, can come to God except the Spirit draws him. That's right. And God draws people when he sees that they are hungry. When he sees that they are open. But he also reaches out and draws people that have constantly rejected him and rejected him until the point where their conscience is seared. Where the spirit that's merciful reaching out to them, they can't even humble themselves no more to it. They become hard. Don't they? I don't know how many times God reached out to Samson. Samson just wouldn't listen. God had to allow his eyes to be put out before Samson could say, remember me one more time. Ain't that something? God has to allow things to happen to people before they humble themselves. See, he says, the day you hear my voice, heart not your heart. But anyway, draw nigh to God. Let's, let's read another one here in Hebrews. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3. And we'll start at verse 1. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. Moses kept the flock of Jethro. His father-in-law. Uh-huh. The priest of Midian. Yes. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. Led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God. Came to the mountain of God. Even to Horeb. Look at that. And the angel of the Lord. And that flock didn't get up there on that mountain. That flock was led to the backside of the desert. They couldn't climb way up there. Moses was being drawn. But Moses was curious. He was drawn near to God. He went up. He left them flocking. Left them down there. But he climbed that mountain. And when he climbed that mountain, he heard about that being the mountain of God, the mountain of her. He was drawn near trying to find God. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. While he climbed that mountain, the angel of God appeared to him. In a flame of fire. In a flame of fire. Out of the midst of a bush. And that angel never would have appeared to him if he didn't climb that mountain. If he didn't first make the first initiative and draw nigh to God. If he didn't first climb. You got to climb into a place. Yes. No more. And he looked and behold the fire. With fire. And the bush was not consumed. And the bush was not consumed. And Moses said. Moses said. I will now turn aside. I'm going to now turn aside. And see this great sight. See this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. I'm going to draw close to this. I'm going to see why this bush is not burned. I see fire. I see the leaves are still green. I see the branches are still there. Nothing is being consumed. I'm going to turn aside and see what's going on. Uh huh. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside. And the Lord see, saw that he got his attention. God called unto him. God called unto him. Out of the midst of the bush. Uh huh. And said Moses. 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 And he said here am I. Here am I. And he said draw not nigh hither. Don't you get close to me. Go ahead. Put off thy shoes. You first pull your shoes. You want to get close to God, pull off everything that you connected with the world. Shoes means, you know, everything that connects you. Moses, you've been out there hurling those sheep, and, and, and you got all that sheep poop on you, and you got all that dirt on you. Pull them sandals off. You can't approach me with all that poop. You can't approach me with all that dirt. People trying to approach God. You know, any kind of way. But now, we're at a place now, we're going to have to lay aside every weight and the sin. That's so easily beset us. So man, what you talking about weight? What you talking about beset? Well, it could be things that uh, easily cause us to fall into a snare. So man, well, I'm a Christian, I don't fall into no snare. I mean, when you should be praying, maybe, maybe you got your eyes on that television. Right. And that television took your 
took that towel you're supposed to give it to God. Yes, well, I'm not, I don't watch TV. I'm going to hold it. Well, maybe you was watching. Maybe you was on that cell phone. <laughs> since you're so holy. Or maybe you was in that Facebook. <laughs> or maybe you was texting somebody. See? And it was the time that you should have been dedicating yourself. Maybe you was talking with a friend and, and, and it over, you know what I'm saying? The thing that so easily ensnares us. You know what the thing that is in your life that hinders you? Maybe that flesh just didn't want to get up and pray. Maybe you're just too lazy. Or maybe you were so over charged with the cares of this life until you got ensnared by these things and they weighted you down while you didn't have time for God. Didn't have time to pray. And this is Tuesday night. In this dedication night. Help me to lay aside. You know, weights could be just an excuse. Lord, I would have, but. Lord, I would have, but. I just didn't have time. I, I would have, but. You know, excuses. Excuses. If it's 4 o'clock in the morning, God wake you up and say, God, I got to get up at 6 o'clock. I can't.
And he or that said, in a, Exodus chapter 3. And he said, verse 5 through 8. Draw not nigh hither. Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes. Put off the shoes. From off thy feet. From off your feet. For the place whereon thou standest. The place where you stand. Is holy ground. Holy ground. Verse 13. And Moses said unto God, uh -huh. Behold, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, yes. and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? Uh -huh. What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, God said to Moses, I am, I am, that I am, that, that I am. Go and tell them, I am a very present help. I am, you know, I, I'm the Lord and I change not. I'm the same. Yesterday, today, forever. I healed yesterday, I healed today. I cast out devils yesterday, I do it today. I worked miracles yesterday, I do it today. I haven't lost any power to the devil. I haven't changed. I was holy yesterday. I'm holy today. I am the Lord and I don't change. The day you search for me, you will find me when you seek me with all in your heart. When you come knocking, I'll open up that door. But you got to knock and you got to be sincere. You, you search for me. You ask and you'll be given. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wish if I had five more minutes, then I would. Can I have at least five more minutes? Let's go over here to um, Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. In verse 1 through 4. Genesis 12, verse 1 through 4. Now the Lord has said unto Abel. And the Lord said to Abel, 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 in other words, before God changed his name to Abraham, he was Abel. Uh-huh. Get thee out of thy country. Get up out of this country. And from thy kindred. Get away from your kinfolk. Your own people of your own house will be a hindrance to you. They ain't gonna believe you. They gonna be. They're not gonna uh, take you serious. Oh, that's just what you call it. Oh, that's just Jesus, the son of. That's the son of Joseph. We know him. That's right. Huh? That's right. I was there. Of your own household would, would would not believe in you. That's right. His own went to his own went to Nazareth. He was brought up at. Hey, that's the carpenter son. We know him. In other words, God said, Moses, God said, well, we'll stop that. I got a whole lot more to go along with this. But God is wanting us to draw close to him. Too many people are taking God for granted. Yes. Taking for granted that there's going to be revival whether we pray or not. Taking for granted there's going to be a move of God whether we seek him or not. No. He said, draw nigh to me. You want power? You want strength? You want a visitation? You want God's spirit? You want God to give you something to stand up to the devil, to resist the devil? Draw nigh to him. In the midst of all this darkness, draw nigh to God. In the midst of spiritual deadness, Draw nigh to God. Yes. In the midst of, you know, where it looks like men have gone into forms of godliness, but denying the power of the earth. Draw nigh to God. God said, I ain't changed. I'm the same. If men would draw nigh to me, I would reveal myself. I would manifest myself. I would give them my reality. I would grant them my power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. Help us, Lord, to draw nigh to you in the midst of trouble, in the midst of darkness, when everything else is 
go in a different direction. God, search out a man that'll draw out of you. Search out a woman that'll draw out of you. A young person that will draw out of you when everybody else is lusting after the flesh, but lusting the eyes, and pride of life. But God, have a people, have a people that will draw close to you. Lord, have a people that will stand out different, that will stand out from the crowd, that will not take and become partakers of all this the devil is offering them. Yes, Jesus. You know, Jesus was offered the world by the devil. He was offered riches. He was offered all these things. But he said, no, uh, -uh. I'm going to draw nigh to God. I'm going to seek God. And he cried unto him that was able to deliver. And he, was, and he prayed a great drops mixed with blood, drawing nigh to God. Even though he was God, Emmanuel, he was God in the flesh, yet as a man, he hungered. As a man, he thirsted. As a man, he knew he drew nigh to God. And if Jesus, the Son of God, had to do that, what about me? What about you? Yes. Yes. Father, we thank you. Help us. Jesus. Stir our hearts up. Yes. Take these teachings on Tuesday nights. Oh, yes, Jesus. I don't give them my own philosophy. I don't give them my own ideas. I just bring them the pure, unadulterated word. Lord, let this word fall in good ground yes. in these last days that it might bring forth a hundredfold. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy. Don't forget, saints. Let's get in here Friday night. Young people service and this weekend. And some of you want to come out tomorrow night and pray? I don't think it's going to be too cold yet. Come on out. We do that until it gets too cold. But it'd be good on Wednesday nights. Get out there and do some praying. For 30 minutes, an hour, come on out. Come on, let's talk. Just a few more minutes, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh. Father, Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you tonight. Lord, help us, Lord, to draw nigh to you. Lord, you said draw nigh to you with a true heart. Draw nigh to you, Lord, with a, the full assurance of faith. To draw nigh to you, Lord, in a humbleness. In a humility and a sincerity. Lord, as you told Abraham, Lord, to get away from his father's house. To get away from his kinfolks. Lord, to get away from where he lived, Lord. Where all the distractions and the hindrances were. Lord, you told him, Lord, to go somewhere and build an altar. Lord, he built that altar. He listened and obeyed you. Lord, so he could draw an eye to you. Lord, that's what you want us to do, to draw it out of you. Go yes. while the world is going on and all this marrying, eating, and drinking, and being overcharged with surfing and drunkenness, cares of this life. God thinking the world is just going to go on. Lord, but you're telling us to draw it out. Yeah, so you can show us something. You're telling us to draw it out. Lord, so you can put your spirit in us. Lord, you're telling us to draw now so you can prepare us for what's coming. Lord, to draw now to you so you can pour out your spirit upon us so we can take your word, Lord, and give it to others to give them some help to pull them out of darkness, to pull them out of their confusion, Lord, to pull them from the grip of the devil. Lord, help me to draw now to you. God, to lay aside every weight to lay aside the sin that so easily beset me. Lord, whatever it is that hinders me, help me to lay it aside. Help me to offer my body to you and set my affections upon things above. Lord, and not on things in this earth. God, all these material things. God, you said you give us food and rain. God, you give us clothing. All these things are good, but they can't sustain us. Lord, you you. Told us you need give us something for our souls. Give us something for our spirits. To give us something for our inner man. Lord, that we can be able to be kept and preserved and be able to overcome. 
Lord, you sent your son. God, a virgin conceived. Lord, unto us a child was given. Lord, unto us a son is born. Lord, and the word was made flesh. That word, God, that was in you, Jesus. Lord, you shed that blood. Lord, and gave us your spirit. God, you give us all these signs. God, that we can see. Lord, it's what you've done for us. And you're telling us just to draw an eye to you. Lord, don't let me ignore this word tonight. Yes, don't let this word go in one ear and out the other. But Lord, help me to take this word and let it fall on the good ground of my heart tonight. And help me to apply this word to my dedication. Apply this word to my prayer life. Apply this word, Lord, to my consecration to you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, this is plain and simple. God, it ain't no something that you're just trying to go around, Lord, but you're giving us something plain and simple. Lord, help me to take heed. I don't want you to pass me by. Lord, like you passed by Abraham's father and you moved on to him. I don't want nobody to take my crown. Lord, help me to take this word to heart tonight. And to build upon this word. Hide it in my heart. Lord, I'm not sin against you. But most of all, help me to draw an eye to you. You said nothing from nothing leaves nothing. But I don't want to be without. I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I don't want to be like a foolish virgin that didn't get any oil in the lamp. Being too lazy to pray. Lord, being too lazy to read the word and come aside. Lord, help me, Lord, to draw it out of you with a true heart. In the name of Jesus, thank you for this word tonight. Lord, let it sink deep in 